It's Terry Sweeney with Light Reading. We're back at MEF 19 in downtown Los Angeles, and I'm joined now by Gabriel Kerner of Telco Systems. Gabriel, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you, Terry. It's a pleasure. So we're, we're here to talk about two topics, UCP and edge computing. Let's, let's start with UCP and just update us, if you will, about the state of that market and, and what's driving the, the dynamics of it. Um, well, if you think about typical business services which have been run uh, until now by dedicated um, hardware devices and functions at uh, business customers, uh, you run very fast into limitation of logistics, running multiple services, uh, limitation of space and uh, hardware devices, um, and overall an over complication to provide uh, new and next generation services to your business customers. So the concept behind UCP is quite simple. Bring one box to the edge, to your uh, business customer, and provide on top of it multiple functions, VNF, starting from typical routing, SD1, and then you can add firewalls and other type of uh, functions as required by your, your customers. So normally that uh, reduces your logistics uh, quite tremendously, so there is a very strong defensive value proposition uh, to UCP, uh, but on the other hand also it adds you a lot of uh, flexibility to provide new type of products to your uh, uh, business customers. And, and what might an example of that be in the market right now? So SD1 is of course a, a very leading uh, function sure. currently. Uh, you would add to the SD1 uh, typical firewall, but you can go forward with uh, session border control, with voice over IP, and with uh, a lot more functions once you have the initial service chain of uh, connectivity. Great. Um, talk if you would about some of the key requirements for service providers in, in the, just to, to manage business services? What, what's, what's happening there? Right, so first of all, you kind of need to think about how you reduce um, the numbers of products that you're going to have to maintain uh, and yet provide flexibility at your uh, business customers. Uh, the second one is how do you ensure that you provide to your customers multiple types of hardware, assuming you have a big enterprise or you want a big box, an ATM, you want a very small box. A remote office, we want different type of hardware, yet manage it in the same way between all the devices and all the functions. Okay. So what you want to have is one operating system that is, of course, decentralized across the devices, but managed centrally and identically across um, your, your systems. That's number one. Number two, you want to have an option which is completely automatically provisioned and fulfilled. Uh, the reason for that is you want to be able to send the device uh, to your customers, not send with it an expert or a technician, and have it fully, completely, uh, automatically uh, deployed, including the operating system, the functions, the VNFs on top of it, and so on. Uh, so that's on the, the, I would say, the initial defensive value proposition. And then moving into a more offensive value proposition, what you want to have is increase your revenue uh, from those business customers, but you also want to give them a better value proposition, providing them with flexibility on the services that they would want to have, uh, new type of services that they are starting to, to uh, um, think of. Uh, you know, once you actually have a computer and operating system, you can do a lot of new things that you could not do until sure. now. Sure. In that vein, how, how does that then evolve or transition to, to edge computing uh, as, a, as a managed service or just as a basic functionality in the network? Right. So actually the concept of UCP and edge computing are very uh, similar from the management perspective. You're going to have hundreds of thousands of devices uh, scattered across thousands of customers. Uh, each one of them with a dedicated function on the device but needs to be centralized or managed centrally uh, for, from and by the service provider. And so the um, operationalization of UCP and edge compute is, is very similar. Uh, what you will see in edge compute are some new requirements uh, in uh, regard to synchronization with, for example, functions that relate to VRAN and so on. Um, but effectively, at the, end, at the end, what you will want is the ability to instantiate any type of functions, and not just VNF, but also microservices based on containers, uh, that will be chained to the typical chain. Sorry, that, that will be chained to the typical um, um, leading uh, VNS uh, instantiated, either on the UCP or on, on the edge compute device. Any pioneers from the carrier or service provider side that that might 
sort of offer an indication of where this is heading with this? So we see right now already uh, uh, an explosion of demand in the UCPE domain, okay. and everybody really see that as a you know the doorway to uh, as well edge computes. Um, some very interesting requirement comes from the flexibility in the hardware that they want to have. So uh, they will want special function VDSL, FXS, and so on. Uh, they will want maybe different type of performance. So some of them ask us to work with, for example, ARM. Uh, architecture devices versus uh, x86. I'm kind of uh, proud to announce or to say that uh, our operating system is natively supporting both uh, x86 and ARM uh, based devices. All right. Well, some great insights here and looks like a, a, a bright future for UCP and edge computing. Uh, Gabriel Kerner of Telco Systems, thanks for joining us today. Uh, thank you very much, David.